Let's go ahead to the phones. Our pleasure now to be joined by Jonathan Martin, BlueGoldNews.com. Jonathan, how you been, man? Hey, good, guys. How are you? We're doing all right. Now, you've got uh, a couple busy weeks here coming up. You're probably always busy, but uh, first day of, of signing period for the junior college transfers. Uh, lay it out for us. What should we expect for WVU in terms of uh, those imp- potential early enrollees? Yeah, well, you know, we kind of went into today thinking there was uh, potential to be a, a, a busy day, but uh, ended up being pretty quiet. Um, you know, as, as many may know, West Virginia had a, a junior college cornerback commitment, Elijah Battle, um, who actually flipped his uh, commitment today and signed with Minnesota. So um, a little bit of a hit there. Uh, but, you know, about a month or so ago, West Virginia targeted several junior college defensive backs. Battle was uh, one that kind of stood out above the rest for a couple of reasons. One, they felt like he could play, and um, uh, but, but also because he could enroll early. And um, – uh, they had, had went after him hard, had him on campus for a visit, um, and actually got a commitment from him there uh, just a couple weeks back. And uh, he took a visit to Minnesota last weekend, and that ended up uh, kind of winning out. So today he he flipped over. Uh, still a little bit of time left. Uh, there's a couple other um, of the guys through the junior college ranks, uh, uh, Mike Daniels, which is a cornerback, Tyrell Chavis, which is a defensive tackle, uh, Malcolm Pridgen, which is an offensive lineman. So there's a couple names still out there, but um, so far uh, pretty quiet. Jonathan, um, first of all, in terms of battle, has anyone gotten any comments from him on why he decided to ultimately sign with Minnesota instead of West Virginia? Y- yeah, well, I will say this. I, I, talked, to, uh, I talked to him last night, and, and he made it clear to me that it was just uh, – a decision that he really struggled with. You know, junior college uh, kids are a little bit different than out of high school for a couple of reasons. One, they've been through the process before. Two, they their, their windows, you know, closed in terms of how long they can necessarily play. So they look for schools for different reasons. And, um, you know, he told me last night that there was, you know, just a couple of reasons why Minnesota had, had become neck and neck with West Virginia. And he just felt like it was more of a, a playing time. Um, you know, he has uh, three years, only played two, and uh, he felt like that, you know, in the end, Minnesota just offered him the chance to get on the field uh, earlier. So, um, you know, like I said, it's uh, for different reasons, for different kids. For him, it was it was um, basically playing time. He felt like he would get it quicker uh, at Minnesota. You mentioned some of those other names there. Uh, give me one or two of those guys who would be the biggest key in, in terms of getting in here early. Well, I, I think that uh, you'd have to go to um, Tyrell Chavis probably as a defensive tackle, uh, which is still a little bit of a question mark on their, whether or not uh, you know he can do that. But um, he's a kid that, that is four-star on scout.com. Schools are just all over him. Auburn, uh, who he took a visit to, West Virginia. Uh, you know, early on coming out of high school, he had Alabama, uh, Florida, several schools. He's a big kid, 6'3", 6'4", over 300 pounds. Could, uh, could walk in and, and, you know, obviously would have to put the work in. But talent-wise, need-wise, um, he could play. And uh, he really likes West Virginia. Going back to what we spoke with Battle, it's playing time. He, he likes the fact that he could potentially come right in and play. And so he's definitely somebody to watch. Jonathan, this signing period, uh, which, as you said, starts today, only is for junior college kids who will enroll for the next semester. So this is sort of a select few who could sign today. West Virginia does have two other junior college players on their commitment list in Westco and Kazir White. Um, neither of those are going to be able to enroll in, in January, right? That's correct. That's correct. Um, I, I, and I double-checked with him last night just to – uh, you know, anytime you deal with junior college, it seems like it's, uh, you know, a little more dot your eyes, cross your teeth type things. But yeah, both said that, uh, yeah, they're, they're going to, they're not signed in this period. Uh, however, good news for West Virginia, it does pretty much, uh, feel positive for the West Virginia fans that those guys are going to stick their commitments to West Virginia. I know Penn State's making a, a really, really strong push with, um, with White, but, uh, as of right now, it's uh, all things point to sticking with West Virginia. They're just not going to sign this period. 
How about some of these high school seniors and what uh, quarterback Cody Saunders there out of Florida, he, he had mentioned potentially enrolling early. Uh, are there any others uh, that could be ro- enrolling early uh, from those high school seniors? Yeah, you know, the landscape across high school football into college football has changed drastically over the last couple of years. It seems like with every year, more and more and more kids are enrolling early. Uh, by my count, there's, uh, there's eight total kids for West Virginia on the commit list that will enroll early. Um, there's potential for two more uh, that's still kind of up in the air. So as of right now, there's, there's eight that have confirmed with uh, Blue Gold News that they are going to enroll early. Um, and, and, you know, the thing is, it's at positions of need. You know, you mentioned Cody Saunders. It's important. Uh, Coach Holerson's even said, you know, if you can get on campus and you can start lifting, you can just get – the atmosphere, yeah, just be around the team, how much more it does for you. Um, defensive line has a couple kids, Jeffrey Puller, a big kid out of Ohio, Reese Donahue in state, uh, you know, West Tonkery, uh, safety. Uh, so there's there's about eight, um, and a lot of them at positions, all of them, I guess, could be a need, but, but at positions where it feels like if they get in, get a head start, uh, you know, learn a little bit, hang around the team, get a chance to lift and work their bodies out with the team that they could potentially contribute a little earlier. So um, anywhere between eight to 10 kids slotted to enroll early, which is a huge yeah. number. Yeah, very much so. Uh, Jonathan, West Virginia, well, the NCAA dead period for recruiting has now started and will last until mid-January, until after the coaches' convention is over. So there's a long period before you get into active recruiting again. And then at that point, There won't be a whole lot of time before signing day. So that last two or three weeks, it'll be sort of a rush. Uh, Give me some of the kids that you think West Virginia is going to make a real strong push for at that point, obviously, who aren't on the commitment list right now. Yeah, and, you know, recruiting uh, changes so fast. So, um, you know, there could be a kid out there that's really not even mentioned much with West Virginia, and there could be something as little as a coaching change elsewhere that, that kind of tips the scales a little bit. But, You know, I think West Virginia is really going to look at um, maybe add another receiver. Uh, They definitely want a linebacker in the class. There's two uh, out of Florida who I think West Virginia will really look hard after. Both visited officially uh, a couple months back, Voshan Joseph and uh, Emmett Rice. Emmett Rice was a commit to Florida State, has backed off of that, and Joseph a commit to Florida. Um, Both appear to be on the market. And uh, so I think West Virginia will look, look hard there. Um, they had a kid, Giovanni Haskins, who's a tight end hybrid style kid on campus last weekend, just before the dead period hit. Um, and uh, and I look for them. So those are three kids that really you want to keep an eye on. And then, like I said, it, it, it literally changes daily. You never know um, what may happen. The, the last two weeks before signing day are just just a mad dash, and uh, so you never really know what's going to happen. So there's a lot of names that could pop up, but. Those are three that I reckon will be uh, will be targeted. Certainly, you mentioned uh, linebackers, and while West Virginia has a couple of linebackers already on the commitment list, obviously Brendan Ferns is a name that uh, we talk about. So I got to ask the obligatory: Are we Brendan still talking Ferns? about him? Yeah, question. And then there's <laughs> an, another junior college linebacker or a, or a junior college linebacker that's gained a lot of interest not only from West Virginia but a lot of others and from a school Mountaineers are familiar with it in in Lackawanna. I don't know if I'll get the the name right: Capri, Capri Dockett. That's Capri Doucette. Doucette. So, there you go. So, unfortunately, so, if he commits to West Virginia, Tony will have to get that one down. <laughs> uh, after Capri some, Doucette. he's yeah. After some, he's dealt with that. That that won't be difficult for him. So, but give us uh, the latest on both Ferns and Doucette. You know, I remember having a segment with you guys uh, months, and I, when I say months, I'm talking three or four, and it, you know, the Brendan Ferns recruitment. Um, was still going, and at, at that point, we kind of felt like a decision was coming, and it just went another month, and then we thought a decision. You know, at this point, um, you're looking at primarily two schools, as it's always been, West Virginia and Penn State. Uh, Notre Dame has really tried to get in the mix, but he's not. Uh, he's talked about a visit there, but that's been pushed back. So um, until they can really step up and, and, and get him on campus, it's really, really hard for me to include him. But it is West Virginia, Penn State. Uh, depending on who you talk to, depending on what day of the week, you'll get a different answer as to where they think you'll end up. I, I will say that for the longest time, I felt like West Virginia was the um, was the landing spot. I'm I'm not so sure about that now. 
um, uh, some of the sources close to the ferns and, and just around the recruitment in general say that Penn State's just made a great impression, that they've kind of hunkered down in the city where he's at and then just kind of a lot of the family and, and people close to him and really have just done an excellent job and kind of maybe pushing ahead. So um, I, at this point, I'd say Penn State maybe took a slight lead, which is could be why you see West Virginia looking to uh, – uh, maybe go elsewhere, and, and uh, Capri Doucette is is very good. He's a junior college linebacker that was just the name first-team All-American. He's got off, offers from West Virginia, of course, Arizona, where he took an official visit last weekend. Um, Iowa State um, offered him today, so uh, Louisville's in the mix. Very good. It could potentially step right in. So, again, two names to really watch uh, moving forward.